Vicar Steve here. We're going to make this video about IV treatments at home for informational and educational purposes. YouTube, please don't delete or demonetize this video. We're taking injectable glutathione, injectable vitamin C, and a B100 complex to mitigate some of the oxidative stress that can occur in advanced levels of bodybuilding when you're training with hypertrophy in mind and taking anabolic androgenic steroids, right? Both cases potentiate a decent amount of oxidative stress. That's why we have glutathione and vitamin C in this IV drip treatment that we're doing from the comforts of our own home. I have a medical professional on standby over there. Yes, right there. So we have several services here in Bangkok where you can do this at home, where a nurse comes to your house, does the IV for you. So you don't have to do that yourself. She's off camera. She doesn't want to be on YouTube. And we're just here absorbing these micronutrients over time. Please don't delete this video. Aaron, are you ready? I'm ready. We got the go ahead. We got the green light, right? Perfect. Okay, that's two thumbs up. We're going to hold a little race and see who absorbs all of this goodness faster. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Vigor Steve here, joined with... Just Aaron. Just me, Aaron. Just Aaron. Okay. okay. <laughs> We're doing some IV treatment at home under the supervision of a medical professional off camera. In this IV bag, both of us have 1800 milligram injectable glutathione to mitigate some of the oxidative stress, which happens at higher levels of bodybuilding. We have 5000 milligrams injectable vitamin C, both of us. And then we have a complex of B vitamins, which I'm not the, as sure of the exact breakdown, so I'll put that on the screen. The entire cocktail is on the screen so you know what we're getting administered. This is diluted in 250 milliliters of normal saline solution, which is sterile, used for IV drips. We had the medical professional administer these catheter needles. And Aaron's got one, I've got one. Nice and comfy. Nice and comfy. These have a little plastic tube, so there's no metal rod, metal needle in our arms that could potentially scrape the arteries. arteries. So this is all in place. While we're doing this IV treatment, we're going to review our blood work, which we took yesterday. Now, we both had some interesting results. We'll start with my blood work first. So I got the results here on my phone. I'll overlay it on the screen so you guys can follow along. Now, as you guys know, I was desperately sourcing for ACG. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of pharmaceutical ACG to go around right now. Previously, I was running MSD Pregnil, which turned out to be bunk. Again, I think it's a shipping issue. Luckily for me, one of the loyal viewers was able to source LG Chemicals IVFC ACG on his own prescription. I was only able to get two vials, so I had limited supply. I ran 500 IOs per day for nine days. The first day, I used 500 IOs on a pregnancy test, which showed that this ACG actually contained ACG. All of the other ACG brands that I've tried previously had zero ACG in there, proven with blood work and pregnancy tests, whether I administer the ACG directly on the pregnancy test or administer the remainder of the vial and did a urine pregnancy test a couple of hours afterwards. None of the ACG that I've used so far turned out to be real. So this LG Chemicals IVFC ACG is real. I used 500 IUs for nine days, didn't really notice a difference. So I bumped it up to a thousand IUs for five days. Then I did my blood work. And unfortunately my testosterone levels are still not up to par. So I'm not exactly sure if this LG Chemicals IVFC contains 5,000 IUs or maybe only a thousand IUs, which is what I suspect. Because when you see my blood work results, my beta ACG levels are only 16 milli IUs per milliliter. Previously, when I administered 250 IUs ACG about an hour before drawing blood, I would get 30 milli IUs per milliliter. So this is pretty much half, but the dose is four times higher. So as you clearly see, Aaron is, um, is winning. So I had to uh, cheat a little bit and move this thing over my shoulder so I can get a better angle on absorbing all this. Uh, <laughs> the thirsty. I am thirsty. He's very thirsty, yeah. You probably have a resting heart rate of like 120. <laughs> and I'm on a beta blocker, so my resting heart rate is 45. And that's why you absorb it 10 times faster. Anyway. You might have a slight advantage. Yeah, you might have a slight advantage, right? Well, he's fully enhanced them. Only enhanced an ACG. Anyway, so, as you see from my blood work, beta ACG is detectable, but it's still a little bit subpar. And my testosterone levels doubled 
from about 120 nanograms per deciliter to let's say 230 nanograms per deciliter. Oh, well, yours were what, 3,800. <laughs> so I'm still far behind. It's the little win, though. It's a little, little win. win. We'll take the little wins. All right. So my estradiol came up quite a bit, uh, 29 picograms per milliliter. This is a common uh, issue with ACG. There's a certain dose of ACG where you get favorable testosterone production, but over that dose, estradiol seems to go up more disproportionately. Now, is that because a thousand IOs ACG every day for five days produced more estradiol, or I'm converting more because I'm putting on a little bit more body fat? Um, unfortunately, I would expect my total testosterone levels to be a little bit higher than 230 nanograms per deciliter. Well, you see that my progesterone is pretty much in range. My prolactin is still pretty okay. My DHA sulfate is 130. So that didn't really budge much since the previous results of when I was taking the fake ACG or bunk ACG or underdosed ACG or whatever ACG was contained within. And then after that, I did the triptorelin shot where my DHA levels went up slightly. I don't have the results in front of me, but I do remember that they were a little bit higher than this DHA sulfate level. Free testosterone is still subclinical. Bioavailable testosterone went up slightly, is now within the reference range, albeit pretty much at the bottom of the reference range. And my SHBG levels actually went down, probably because I'm training a little bit harder and eating more food. So based on this hormone levels, um, I'm not going to continue with this ACG monotherapy. Again, I've tested all of the brands that I could find here in Thailand. This is also pharmaceutical grades. I'm not exactly sure of the quality or if there's something going on globally with the production quality. But the last option I have at my disposal is Gorilla Mind Sigma. I'll start that at four capsules per day. Give that a couple of days, then I might increase that to eight capsules per day. As soon as I feel worse than I am feeling right now, and to be fair, you know, with this IV drip and all of the other things that I'm doing with my body for anti-aging purposes, with the Mod C and the occasional NAD+, which is not within this drip, I feel quite fine. I feel more anabolic now that Aaron is here and that my testosterone levels have doubled from a measly 122 a whopping 230 nanograms. Even that jump, I, I would say, was it's noticeable, noticeable yeah. in the gym, like, for sure. Because you noticed better that I was stronger. getting better pumps yeah, after yeah. increasing the 1,000 IOS ACG per day. Yeah. You said it was a little bit fuller. And you said you were feeling a little bit. I felt so better, yeah. some effect. So the weird thing is, I, I noticed that it was getting, started to feel better on increasing this dose from 500 IOS to 1,000 IOS, or let's say um, 0 0.1 milliliter to 0 0.2 milliliters. That's probably a better... <laughs> because I don't know how much ACG is, awesome, is yeah. in there. Um, so doubling the ACG administration made me feel better. I was getting stronger. Right? The motivation was getting back. My sex drive is also better. But when you get your blood work results, it's still subpar. So right, if I weren't to do blood work, I would say I'm good. And now that I do blood work and I see that my testosterone is still kind of feebly, um, I do feel that I need to make some change. So I'll try Gorillamine Sigma for maybe two weeks, do some blood work, whether that's on four capsules per day or eight capsules per day. If you don't notice the difference on four capsules, I go to eight capsules. And based on those blood work results, I'll decide if I want to continue with the Gorilla Mind Sigma or not, and then switch to TRT potentially. And then TRT will be about 150 milligrams per week until I feel it's cold enough and the temperature has come down enough, the humidity is favorable, to do a cycle again of about 300 milligrams in total, let's say 150 tests, 125 milligrams of Primo, maybe five milligrams of Anivar per day. I know these are all very low dosages, but guys, I don't really need more at this point, right? I'm just trying to sustain my size. You're actively trying to grow, so he'll do a real cycle and I'll just do a baby cycle of a couple different compounds when the temperature permits it. So that pretty much covers my blood work results and what I'm going to do over the next couple of weeks or so. Let's go over your blood work results. Your hormones look significantly better than mine, but your estradiol is a little high. A little high. So what happened? <laughs> a little it? high. A little high. So yeah, I've, I've been off of my uh, aromasin for a good few weeks now. Um, I brought myself back down to around 300 megs of testosterone. So it's expected and also switching over now to pharma grade testosterone right. and I have a little bit more real testosterone right. in the system and conversion, etc. Right. So right now my estradiol is 120.9. So pretty high, but nothing that we can't get back down. Yeah. And um, I think that's just purely over the last two weeks because yeah. he was 
you're running your underground lab at 300 milligrams per week, and then we yeah. bumped it a little bit to half an ampule Bayer test of iron, which contains approximately 165 milligrams test per half a cc, right? Again, Bayer test of irons are overfilled. Yeah. So even though it says 250 milligrams per one milliliter on the ampule, if you get 1.2, 1.25 milliliters, you're actually getting 325 milligrams of actual testosterone. So you did half a cc, yeah. and you're now what, four four injections in? Three injections yeah. in? Four. Four, right. Four so, of today. Right. So we did an injection the day before, and I think maybe you got a little bit of conversion ahead of time. Yeah. So that's why his uh, estradiol is a little bit high, right? I think it hasn't been that high for that long. Probably explains why I'm a little bit soft and watery as well. A exactly. Bit, a little bit sloppy looking, a bit moon face. Don't worry. So I uh, hooked him up with some Pfizer Aromacin. So yeah. we'll get that under control and then we'll retest in about two to four weeks when his entire protocol is ready. Um, just to confirm that his estradiol is back in the range. Yep. So uh, progesterone and prolactin are both fine. Uh, testosterone levels are 3,372.66 nanograms per deciliter. So pretty high. Pretty Happy high. With that, I would say that the test we're using now is good. It's legit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His prolactin is a little bit elevated from the last blood work results you did in, what, November, right? November, yeah. Right. Because this estradiol is a little bit elevated. So I think we'll get that under control. So we're not going to do any cabergoline or vitamin B6, B5, B. That's not required. Getting our estradiol down with aromacin will bring the prolactin back in range. Yeah. Um, so the testosterone is very good. I'm, I'm mad jealous. <laughs> when I'm looking at the testosterone level, I'm mad jealous. So he's, uh, he's going to be training hard for the both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll just change his weights and get some anabolism out of that. So you see his DHA sulfate levels. You haven't used any ACG or DHEA supplementation. Nada. He's in the middle of the reference range. So personally, I would like to see this a little bit higher. Um, normally I would use or recommend him to use some ACG, but well, at the price, <laughs> the LG chemicals, IVFC, ACG is uh, going for, and uh, the, maybe not the potency is the best. Yeah. I'm well, just maybe not real at all. Well, I think it's <laughs> real, but I think there's something wrong with the potency. And I think that's globally, not just this brand, but I think yeah. global issue, because I've got a lot of messages of you guys having similar issues over the last couple of weeks. So I think it's just a global issue due to new restrictions in the United States regarding ACG. And then, and then maybe the ACG suppliers are like, you know what, um, if this is going to be the case. We're going to alter the uh, the active <laughs> pharmaceutical ingredients. Yeah, just speculating, guys. Let's see. Um, so we're going to put you on DHEA and pregnenolone supplementation. Yep. Right? To get your DHEA sulfate levels up a little bit. Your progesterone is fine, so there's some room. For um, pregnenolone supplementation, I think we'll start with 10 milligrams pregnenolone and 25 milligrams DHEA. And then your SHBG is what, 18? Right at the bottom end of the range there, yeah. really. So we're going to throw in some turkey turk, right? Yeah. So based on my previous experience with turkesterone, which I ran at my end of my cycle, and ectisterone, I saw that my SHBG levels went up. Now, this was in combination with primabolin. So you can't really expect super high uh, <laughs> SHBG levels with a DHT derivative, but he's still 90, give or take 90 nanomoles per liter. So as soon as the turkesterone and ecosterone arrives and we've gotten all of his organ imaging out of the way, then we'll put you on 300 milligrams. Yep. So 150 milligrams turkesterone, 150 milligrams ecosterone. We'll do, I think it will arrive in about two weeks. So we'll do baseline blood work in two weeks. That will be on his channel just to see if estradiol came back into range and a couple other markers which are off, and then we'll get a baseline reading of the SHPG, you'll probably go on cycle by that time. Probably, right? yeah, yeah. As long as we've got green lights and everything else, we'll, exactly. we'll go on. Exactly. So we're just trying to get all of this medical stuff out of the way. If he gets the green light, he'll go on cycle, and then we'll use turkesterone and ecosterone preventatively to somewhat sustain his SHPG levels, because I think when you're on test and primo, you know, give or take 300 tests, 300 primos, somewhere there. And we'll have to design the full cycle when we get those baseline readings in two weeks. Give or take there. I just want to sustain this SHBG and DHA sulfate levels so you can stay as anabolic as possible. So, yeah, based on uh, those results, I'm pretty happy overall, to be honest. You know, considering based on uh, blood work back in November... And I had a bit of a chunk of an off-season there as well. I'm very, very happy with that. Right. There's a couple of things we're going to address. The other stuff, I'll deep dive. I'll address it more on my YouTube channel. I'll go through all of the different markers, and we'll go through everything and explain everything. So, like I said, everything is transparent moving forward into the off-season. Right. 
So we did also some ultrasounds on your abdomen. Yep. And, and thyroid. The, and thyroid. So your thyroid is totally fine. Yep. No problems. But even though this blood work, so his, his liver markers are all in range, his kidney markers are all in range. You can see that on this YouTube channel. We did see on your liver, no surprise, <laughs> grade one, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Yeah. So oh, yeah. in your case, like his liver enzymes were never elevated unless you were on prep. Yeah. Like now you're now you're pretty much in the reference range. Once yep. it's slightly over, and you can write that off as training intensity. His ferritin yeah. levels are in range. So his blood work has been looking very, very good. Certainly better than mine over the last two years leading up to the NAFLD that I was diagnosed with. And he still got NAFLD. Now, this is an ultrasound that is um, taken at a you know a routine checkup place. So Friday or Saturday, we're going to go to a real hospital. Yeah. And then do a fibro scan to see how severe the NFLD is. Because again, keep in mind that the ultrasounds, it's always up to the sonographer, the, the person who does the ultrasound, how bad it is. And when you see the liver, basically it's an image. So you, you don't have, really have a tangible number like with a fibro scan where they uh, determine the, the rigidity and the amount of fat in the liver. And then you get a number back. So in this case, and in my case, when I was diagnosed with NFLD, you basically get grade one, grade one and a half, grade two, yeah. depending on the interpretation of the sonographer. Now, it's still better to do a routine checkup like yeah. this, get a little bit of data and then do the, the, the full examination at a clinic. Because if we do all of this full examination at a clinic or a hospital, yeah, pricey. So this, this blood work and the ultrasound, how much did it take you back? Everything altogether set me back. I think it was around 15,000 Thai baht. 15,000 Thai baht. So that's give or take $500 for a full, full blood work panel and a full abdominal ultrasound and thyroid examination. So we, fi we saw that you had grade one fatty liver disease. Again, yeah. it's dependent on the sonographer. All your blood work markers were in range. So it's good that we did it. Yeah. Again, it's very important to do these ultrasounds because Blood work only tells you one part of the story. You need a full picture of your health. So that, I'm very happy that you came here and we did this ultrasound right away because now we can kind of design the road forward, right? We know that we need to address a little bit of fat in your liver, yep. which you're you're going to have to recomp a little bit for social media. That's fine. The plan is to get a little bit leaner now anyway right. and um, get nice and healthy, nice clean slates. So exactly. all of those things should be tackled very easily. I think that's a six six to eight weeks process for him, which is yep. probably as long as he needs a diet anyway to get you know, a good six pack. And then, as always, everything will be documented. Your health markers on your channel. Yep. And my health markers on my channel. Stay tuned. I really hope we can set a new standard for transparency, whether that's IV treatment on camera. And again, YouTube, please don't delete or demonetize this video. Because, for fuck's sake, I need the revenue. Right? This is not cheap. <laughs> this is not cheap. And a CT angiogram and all this medical examination is not cheap either. So again, full transparency, if we're going to be the first, hopefully some of you guys will follow because this sport is never going to change unless people are open and transparent about what's going on with their body, the good with the bad. And if there's bad, what do we do? Cool, Steve. No, 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 we fix that shit. <laughs> we get it examined and we fix that shit. Okay. You're done, so we're gonna remove your IV, and then I'm uh, I'm gonna stick here, uh, stick around. Winner. Yeah, winner. Congrats. Winner. Congrats uh, on leaving hanging. You. Cheers. Um, I need it. My kidneys. Are, <laughs> my kidneys are about to fall out of my yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah, I, I need, it. need it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. And like, if you're looking for something specific, check out the YouTube description section <laughs> with sponsors and affiliates. I now have an Amazon store where all the products that I highly believe in, whether those are medical screening devices, injection material, health supplements, anything to keep your healthy on your bodybuilding or fitness aspiration journey, it's all there on the Amazon store. So have a look there. And before I close off this video, a single double bicep, please join me. So it's a front double bicep. Boom. All right, I can't lift my arm because there's an IV in there. <laughs> <laughs> For the vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. Much appreciated, much love. Steven Aaron, out.